Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church. Uh, this summer we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation in small little bite-sized chunks. We're still in chapter 1. You're welcome to follow along with us. We'll be picking up in Revelation 1 verse 9. Revelation 1 verse 9 says, I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. We're only at the beginning of our study in Revelation, and right off in chapter 1, our author John is going to say, I got to go to heaven, right? I got to go to heaven. I got to see God. I was there. I was in heaven. I was in the throne room. And if you've ever wondered what God looks like, what Jesus looks like, what heaven looks like, that's what John is going to describe to us. John is the author of Revelation, and this is his encouragement that he is writing to seven different churches that are experiencing tribulation. John is in a Roman prison on an island called Patmos, and he's going to stay there. It's a penal colony. It's a mining camp, and the Bible uh, says that he stays there. Tradition says that he dies at the age of 90. John says, I was there, I was on the island, I had a vision. And in verse 10, he says, in fact, I was in the Spirit. He says, I was in the Spirit. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's John's way of admitting that he wasn't there physically, right? He's saying, I didn't leave the island. I know my body is still on the island, but my mind, my soul, it was transported to be with God. Does that mean he was in a dream? Does that mean he was having a trance? You know, we, we don't know. We don't know what that looked like. In the Greek, it's the word ekstasis, which is where we get the word for ecstasy. But John admits he's not physically there, right? So it's real to him, but maybe a little bit more real than just a, an average dream. This is what Revelation is all about. It's John's revealing, right? It's his realizing what heaven is like, what God is like. That's crazy, right? John is imprisoned on an island that is 10 miles by 6 miles. <laughs> and suddenly, like in an instant, he's left that place and now he's in heaven. In this book, John is going to describe heaven, describe God, describe Jesus as best he can. He is going to use earthly language to describe heavenly beings or to describe heavenly places. And of course, He's going to fall short. He's not going to be able to find that perfect word, but he's going to do his best. And I know we typically don't like to read Revelation because we think it's difficult, or we think there's more ways than one to interpret it, or we get nervous that, you know, we'll interpret it wrong. But, you know, John's doing his best, so I think it's fair that when we read it, we just try our best. You know, the readers of this book lived in first century Turkey, so if they could figure it out, I'm sure we can too. Revelation verse 10 says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. What is the Lord's day? Well, it's Sunday, right? It's the day that they decided to worship Jesus, worship God, after Jesus ascended to heaven on Sunday. And I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and to Pergamum, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. He says, I had this vision on Sunday, and while I was there, I heard a loud voice behind me like a trumpet, he says. Now, does he mean an actual trumpet? Well, I mean, what's the loudest thing you've ever heard? A car alarm? An air raid siren? He's thinking of something that's so loud, so ear-splitting, a trumpet was probably the loudest thing he could think of. Then God says, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. So this is what he's doing. This is what the beginning of Revelation is. He's recording what he saw, recording what he was told to do. Verse 12 said, then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. What are lampstands? Well, they're just like you'd think, right? It's a tall brass stand with a lamp on top made to give light to a room. 
But if you skip all the way down to verse 20 in Revelation, it gives you another little clue about what a lampstand is. Verse 20 says, As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So the lampstands become symbols. They become representations of the churches that John is going to write to. And I think that should remind us of a teaching of Jesus that he had when he was here on earth, which is Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You know, when Jesus said this, he was speaking to a crowd. He was talking to ordinary people. And Jesus told them, you are the light of the world. And even today, your church, our church, where you attend church, you are the light of the world. And that's how God intends to get his work done on earth, through you, right? Through his church. It's not just pastors. It's not just missionaries. It's not just those special people who are the light. It's everybody. Everybody who loves the Lord. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.